Thank you guys for tuning in. Once again, Carpentry with Chris. In this video, I will be giving some interview tips on the kind of clothes that you should be wearing, kind of questions you should be expecting, and how to get the job how to get your career started. In other words, before becoming a carpenter apprentice, I applied for Local 6 here in San Francisco, California, which is the electrician's union. And I was fortunate enough to pass the math test and to pass the English test. And because of that, I was able and I was given an interview. I have a really good feeling that I still am going to get accepted as a electrician apprentice, but I have to wait for everything be COVID free. And I don't know when that's gonna happen, so I had a plan B, which was to do a pre-apprenticeship program, and thankfully I did do that, and I don't regret becoming a carpenter apprentice. Uh, is this my end goal? Absolutely not. I would like to make my own company and just do the best that I can. I remember when I walked in into the interview, a lot of people probably are gonna think, hey, a suit and a tie. But put it this way, like superintendents, what are they putting on when they come and visit us at a job site? Are they coming in a suit and a tie? 99.9% .9 of the time, they're not. They're coming in with uh, somewhat some nice, you know, construction pants. I don't know, some nice blue jean dickies or whatever. And some nice boots. Some red wings. Boots that don't look like they've been beaten up. And a long sleeve flannel shirt. You know, if you're applying for a bank, then yes, I would say a suit and a tie. But in the construction field, it's a little bit different. I would personally, I wouldn't recommend wearing a suit and a tie because the more and more you start working out here in the field, the more and more you just start kind of getting the idea, what is it that we wear every day? Even if you're becoming a, an electrician or a plumber uh, for the higher, the more top tier kind of trades in, in the construction field, I, I personally wouldn't recommend wearing a suit and a tie. Uh, to each their own, you know, some others are going to tell you, hey, whatever job, even if you go to McDonald's, even if you go to Burger King, uh, put on your suit and a tie. But I remember one time I, I applied for In-N-Out, a uh, popular food chain out here in California, and um, I went in a suit and a tie, you know, just kind of to impress, but I think I, I kind of pushed it a little bit too much. I think I was a little bit of a tryhard. Uh, you know, I kind of just gave the the vibe of like dude this guy's like takes it takes it too seriously uh, which I thought it was kind of good right but um, at the end of the day it's like I'm flipping burgers and and the uniform I'm gonna be wearing isn't gonna be a suit and a tie when I'm out there you know flipping burgers and so on and so forth and they did not accept really make me the happiest person on earth <laughs> you okay you know, so shame on them, but it is what it is. You just kind of have to think of the the scope of work that you're going to be doing, and it's construction. Putting some dirt, some concrete on us. You know, touching rebar, getting our hands and our gloves really dirty. Um, it's just hard nose work. And um, so for my interview, I went in some construction pants, clean construction pants, some nice clean boots, and a long sleeve shirt. I didn't go short sleeve because out here in the field, um, I tend to see a lot of people come out here with long sleeve shirts because they don't want to get the farmer's tan. Also, it's just kind of, you don't want to cut yourself with some rebar, cut yourself with a knife. I don't know, just take care of your skin. I did tuck in my shirt. That's my style. If you don't want to do that, you know, then it's okay. But uh, I didn't mind looking like Steve Urkel for, for a little bit. Just be yourself. Number one, when you enter into the room, even if you're nervous, fake it till you make it just act cool calm and collect mentally i was just getting myself ready i was like i need to be ready so you have to be mentally ready think positive it's normal to be nervous but don't let your nerves take over you because if not you're gonna you're possibly not gonna get the job just because of how nervous and jittery you are no matter how well your test scores are if you didn't interview well they'll they'll take that into into big consideration and I walked in, you know, I didn't shake anyone's hands because COVID was kind of getting a little bit more serious. You'll kind of get the vibe of the room. Once you enter into the room, you'll see if someone want, reaches out to shake the, shake your hand, then go ahead and do that. But if they don't do that, no one stands up and acknowledges you, and kind of, then you kind of follow the same, same rhythm, same vibe as them. And so I, I just walked into the room. I saw about six people. All of them were kind of dressed up really nice and so on and so forth, but I, I came in like I was ready to work. I saw some people going with suits and ties, but I didn't do that. So I, I went in with the mentality that I'm ready to work. And I sat down. Well, duh. 
And I kind of did like a little bit of a joke where I was like, are you guys nervous in interviewing me right now? Kind of to just break the ice and just relax everyone. And everyone kind of just giggled and they're like, no, you know, are you nervous? I'm like, uh, no, no, not really. Honestly, I feel really good and confident. One thing, there, there, there are questions in every interview, no matter what job you apply to, that they're always going to ask you. But for example, so tell me about yourself. You know, before I answer your question, I just want to thank you guys for the opportunity you're giving me. I know you guys have a lot of interviews, but I just want to say thank you. Yeah, kind of short, simple, sweet. And now let's get to the question where it's like, hmm, you know, I remember that guy because he thanked us even before he ever answered the question. It kind of makes you stand out in a nice way. And I would, without me making it seem so obvious, but I would notice how they were just like, you know, nodding their heads like, you know, like, okay, cool. That was something different. And I told them something that wasn't on the resumes or on the applications that I had already written. So in my resume, I kind of showed them my work experience that I was top flight security. Oh, look at it. Where you going? I'm trying to park so I can go on a check cash flight. You can't park right here. Why not? Because there's a new policy. Give me the number or you can't park here in this lot. I ain't never heard no policy like that. Because uh -huh. you ain't never met a top flight security. Um, you know that I did a little bit of construction work with my father and, and so on and so forth So I was gonna tell him something that's oh, out of that resume something that it's gonna make him just remember me Not repeat the same thing that they can already read on a piece of paper. I remember I told him I was born and raised in San Francisco and I love running ever since I was a little kid I just always enjoy running and I play music on my free time and I love giving back to my community and it's just something different where it's like okay cool like this is a human being actually like this isn't a robot where it just has like a standard oh I love to work construction and I, I'm a hard worker and I never give up promise you I'm gonna work hard and my middle name is never give up Bruh. and it's just like okay it's unnecessary information and another one is why should we hire you um, over the other candidate and this is where I did some research on the company um, so you know I did some research on local six I looked them up when when they were founded I remember because I I told them specifically even though they didn't ask me but I told them so then they 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 saw that I put in effort to understand the company that I'm getting into and I let them know like and I really love you guys this concept and how you guys give back to the community and all, I am all about that giving back to the community where I do that as well at my church where I teach kids how to play music I also you know went back to my old high school and I started becoming a coach for this sport and, and so on and so forth and just kind of like meshing combining everything together and you know, I'm just the type of person where, and this is where you kind of like put in your little bit, maybe a little bit touch on, a little bit more in depth on what's on your resume here. Yeah, I've worked with my father, so I do know how the construction field is, where it's very hard nosed. You have different personalities, and I am used to someone always telling me what to do and how, and sometimes they're gonna tell me in a very patient manner, and other times they're gonna tell me in a very vulgar manner. And I have thick, thick skin because of that. I give them, you know the reason why uh, so I tell them you know what I've done and and give them examples and I think that's what made me really stand out and they told me an example it's like give me an example when there was an emergency in your life and how did you handle that situation it was a situation when I was a security guard where you know there was a, a group of gentlemen that were about to fight over a parking spot and I remember I just took notice of everything and I showed them the fine details. I told them, you know, they were driving a white Prius and I noticed that one of them had a Costco pizza inside the back seat. And I kind of all saw them like, why is he bringing up a Costco pizza in the interview? You know, and they were like, where is he going with this? I tried to minimize the situation and I brought humor into the into a tough situation where I told them, you know what, guys, hey, let's just relax and let's just go enjoy that, that pizza that we have right here at the back seat. And they all laughed and they were like, you know what, out of respect and because of what you, how you approach this, I'm, I'm going to leave this scenario. You know, and I didn't, I didn't make fun of anyone in this situation, I told them. And I just tried to make them see the bigger picture where I told the gentleman, hey, you know, you're fighting over a parking spot when you have your son or your daughter in the vehicle. And I think you just have to think of the bigger picture where you can find another spot. You know, this isn't the only spot. Everything happens for a reason. Just relax and thank you so much for your for comprehending. And they really enjoyed that. Some tips, just be relaxed. If you don't know the answer to something, 
ask them to repeat the question so it gives you more time to kind of think of an answer. If you don't have the answer, say they ask you a question like, what's the most difficult thing that's happened to you this past week? Just kind of give it like five seconds. That's a great question. The most difficult thing that's happened to me is so on and so forth, you know? And they're gonna throw you out of pocket questions where you're just gonna be like, oh man, I gotta think in a whiff. But just be relaxed, show yourself, you know, don't really talk about that you're hard working and all this and that because they, they don't wanna hear the same lines. It's kind of like you talking to a girl and you just say, oh, you're so beautiful. It's like, man, I've, I've heard that from like 50,000 guys already. What well, duh. Like from Instagram, on TikTok, and so on and so forth. It's like, what, what's different? Honestly, the most hardest working people don't even say they're hardworking. They just do. You just don't want to talk, really. I'm just about that action, boss. Practice questions that they're gonna give you. Like if you're, if you're doing carpentry, think about questions that can relate with that job. I remember when I was driving in the car, and I would just uh, interview myself, and I, you know, I would just give myself like random questions. Just think of a bunch of questions. Just be relaxed, and take your time. Don't rush it. Take your time, don't rush it, and and just thank them. Honestly, a thank you goes goes a long way. I hope this helps.